Welcome back fellow creatives. Today we're going to be painting this beautiful botanical illustration together using a simple watercolour swatch background and a black fine liner to overlay some very simple berries, flowers and leaves over the top. I'll pop a link to all of the supplies I've used in the description below but all you're going to need is paper, watercolours and a black pen. Couldn't be simpler so let's get started. So one of my favourite things to do when I've got art block is just to simply draw some botanicals over some blobs of water. So all we're going to do here is I'm going to pick up a mustard colour, like a yellow ochre. Try and make it kind of quite watery. Um, I'd say sort of a little bit like milk consistency. And then all you're going to do is imagine you've got a block that's about a third of the page wide and you're going to do this. Don't worry about if it's being dry brushed, that's absolutely fine. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of a more orangey and straight on, I'm just going to paint into that just a little bit of color variation and then I'm going to take a real concentrated bit just pop it hanging over the edge like that and then a bit that I'm going to really streak up the bottom like that in the middle of nowhere just take a little bit more of that off I'm going to leave that one like that. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be like a quite a reddy brown, um, almost sort of like a brick red, but with a, it's got a little bit more red in it. And I'm going to do the same. This time I'm going to go this way as well, so it really feels like it's filled in. But I'm going to then leave my rough edges of my crisscross. And I'm going to take a little bit more of a um, brighter pink red and just pop a couple more bits in the middle. Wash your brush off and clean your brush, dry your brush on a cloth if you've got one and then just sort of make sure that there isn't too much water. And then you can take the tip if you want and just pop a few concentrated elements into it like we did before, just to give it kind of abstract feel and then I feel like this needs something just to balance it out so I'm going to go over to an a more orangey and just pop a little bit more bringing that out onto the edge a bit there just a little bit more of that orange like so okay so for our last one I think I'm going to go with a blue um, so I have quite a nice light it's almost like a kind of Payne's grey Prussian blue. So I'm going to keep plenty of water going. I'm going to make this one less square looking. I've got a little cat hair there. Um, less square looking. And try not to go too dark because we are going to be putting black pen over that. So I quite like that with just that one dark element and the rest light. Now to give this a little bit of contrast, I'm just going to dip into a green that I've got here that's a lot more of a foresty green, um, like a sort of marine pine green. And the same again if you wanted to do, you know, like a couple of concentrated bits of the colour, just to give it a little bit of variety. Don't be afraid to dip your brush straight in without a lot of water on the brush to add a few bits and then all you can do is wash your brush off, dry your brush off and then just take that and just drag the paint about a little bit in case it's starting to create blooms and you don't really want those blooms. Um, if you like then that's fine. Um, so I'm happy with this arrangement, um, there's not going to be a need to put any more paint on because the focal point really is the flowers um, that we are going to overlay on the top. So all we need to do now is wait for this to dry and then we'll come back um, with our tools. So I'm going to be using just a normal um, 
graphite pencil to sketch out my flowers at first and then I'm going to be using a couple of black marker pens these are watercolor which I mean waterproof which does help if you're planning to go we might go back over with a few little details of paint I've just got a fine and a small I believe it is yes fine and small Interestingly, the fine is smaller than the small, but anyway, two different sizes and then a white jelly pen if you wanted to at the end um, and a glittery jelly pen to add some extra embellishes, but you could just keep it um, at the black. So we'll wait for that to dry. It shouldn't take long. I would make a cup of tea or something, pop back in about half an hour. Um, ultimately, if you fancied, you could carry on and do so in another sketchbook so that you've got a little bit of a rotation. And we're going to be doing three different types of um, vases and foliage coming out of those. So now that our watercolour is dry, we're going to draw our vases over. So whilst this is a warm-up exercise and it's not particularly about being polished and having a super refined finish it's about the process itself what i do like to think about practice is purposeful practice so that's practice having some form of plan um so that you know what you're aiming for it's not uh abstract just moving your brush and your strokes about to get into the feeling. So with this in mind, it is probably a good idea to have a little bit of an idea about the three different vases that we're going to put over. And a good example will be, rather than me diving straight in, I'm going to think, okay, um, I'd like to have a vase with a, um, with a curved neck and quite tall going into a, a bell-shaped vase. And then the next vase I'd like to have is maybe more of a um, a fishbowl style. So I'm going to be going straight out into more of a round stubbier vase. And then the last vase I'd like to have is maybe a, um, a straight vase. So it's going to have straight sides and it's going to be like that. So, you know, that's what I'm aiming for. And, you know, a quick one minute sketch and I'm ready to go. So we're going to be aiming for the flowers and the vase actually coming out of the sections and even to the sides of the sections. It's not to place your picture here. It wants to create visual interest. So we want some black straight on the white when we place our pen on. So I'm going to be looking for the tops of the vases to probably be intersecting with the um, with the center line of these pieces. So I'm going to draw my first vase top here and very loosely I'm just going to sketch that out, pop my curved sides in, I'm going to take my bottom down to about here so I know that I want my sides to come out like this and I'm going to place the bottom of my vase somewhere like that. And it doesn't need to be perfect, I mean it really just is a guide. Okay, so my next vase is a little bit um, bulkier, so I'm going to try and keep the um, tops of the vases in relatively the same place, but I'm going to draw my oval centerpiece and I'm going to aim to come out here at the bottom. So I'm going to go round like that and then I'm going to pop the bottom of my vase like so. Lovely. And then the last one being our square sides or straight sided vase. So pop that like that and then it's simply going to come down into the two sides with the bottom like this. So one thing we can do is we can ink the vases in first. In fact, that's probably a little bit too much of a straight bottom. It wants to match the curve of the top of your vase. So I'm now going to ink those in using the larger of my two black, my two black pens. Now, a little trick well, it's not really a trick, a little technique to use when inking is not to go in and ink 
all of the vase like this, okay? Two reasons why. When you're keeping your pen on the page for a long time, you're more likely to wander off and the stroke's going to feel less purposeful. And every time we have a very purposeful stroke, it's going to give you a much pleasant view. So the trick to that is to minimise the amount of time that we actually have our pen drawing our curve or our line. Now we can break that up in a couple of different ways. We can do a curve and we can stop and then we can start again, like so, with a little gap. We can do a part of it. We can make a dot and then we can carry on like so. Or we can choose to create a line, stop, create another bit of a line and then carry on. And you can do any number of combinations of a gap, a line and a dot just to break that up. And what it does is, I'm not trying to get you to create something completely realistic. I know that everything in life is not outlined by black. By leaving these little elements in it, it just gives it a really nice pleasing touch. So we're going to ink in our vases using that technique. I'll just turn my pad, there we go. So I'm going to ink a little dot, take that round. And if you feel at any point where you're, so you can see I was tailing off a little bit there, that's where I'm going to stop. And you don't always have to go in the same direction. You could choose to switch it up, sometimes drawing up, sometimes drawing down. Your arm or your hand's going to be predisposed to want to draw curves in a certain way. So where you're changing direction is always a good place to stop. Whereas if I was to try and curve around here, it might be a little difficult. I'm probably more comfortable drawing it this way. So I'm going to do a little dash at the bottom and then I'm going to join my line up at the bottom there. There we go, I've inked in the first vase. And there's a couple of extra little bits that we'll do with the slightly finer black pen in a moment. And the aim here is just to have fun. It's a bit of practice. It does create a really nice effect. It's very good for greetings cards or just a nice little floral picture for your wall. You could think about put, popping herbs in. Herbs are always a very good one. If you're looking for some art to pop on your kitchen walls, they always work very well. Okay, so I'm going to take this clip off so I can try and at least get a little bit of a straight line down to the bottom there. Okay, so the last bit here. And there we have our three black vases ready to go with our flowers. So one thing I like to do is get a slightly smaller one and just to edge on the inside a little bit. And what you're aiming to do is you're almost aiming to create the thickness of the vase where you're probably going to see glass and therefore the light is going to be um, darker as it shines through. So that's simply about just taking a little section on the inside like so. I'm just popping a little bit of an extra line down here, like so. And the beauty of that is where you do your, your little dots and dashes, a little artistic Morse code, you can alternate them so you've got, you know, a thick line that's um, running parallel to where you've got a little bit of a stop 
like so. Okay. Okay. Now we could, if we wanted to, pop a little bit more along the bottom of the vase here to show where the back of that is. Just gone very lightly, very lightly. There we go. And again, this rounded part here, probably be somewhere kind of like that. In fact, that probably would have gone in a little bit more than that, but I've done it so lightly, I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to show you three of the easiest foliages. If you want to use a pencil in combination with a pen, that's absolutely fine. So the key to drawing foliage and plants is the order in which we lay down the stems versus the flowers and berries and leaves. And I like to do it in a combination. So the first thing I like to do is I like to pop one of my main stems in. So I'm going to work on this middle and I'm going to draw a stem that's going to be a very gentle S curve going through the center to here. So I want it to start about here, finish about here, and have a cross section about here. And I'm going to be curving it this way first and then that way second. So it's going to go down to about here. Then it's going to curve, okay? And then from that, I'm going to do one that's going like this. And then I'm going to do one that's going to be a little bit lower down and arch over to about here. Okay, so that is my main stems or branches. Now there will be other ones tailing off from it and I'm going to do those with pen. So I'm going to go in with my um, thick pen to do these and then I'm going to use my thin pen to create the flowers. So I'm going to ink in my black stem, like so. And then I'm going to create my flowers. So these flowers are, they're nondescript flowers. They're kind of a bit like a sweet pea. Um, now the trick is, it's all about curves and angles. So the way we're going to do this, it's going to be usually made up of three petals. We're going to do a curve and then a bit of a straight line like that. So those are actually quite angled. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come out the other side and do more of some straight lines like that. And then maybe a point here then going back in like that. So the parts that come from here are more curved, so whether that's curved that way or curved that way, and then the tops are angled, but with a soft point on our flowers. So let's take this end one and let's make it into two. So I'm going to curve, do a little bit of an angle and curve back. And I'm going to curve that way and do a little bit of an angle like that, a little bit of an angle, and I'm going to curve. Can you see? There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a couple off this stem. So I'm going to place one here, probably one here, and then probably one down here like this. And think about the direction. So I'm going to make this one angled more like that. I'm going to make this one angled more to the top. And these don't have to be all looking the same. And think about the way flowers twist and turn. You're not always going to perfectly see all of the petal. Sometimes 
this one's going to be taller sometimes the middle one's going to be taller so let's pop this one actually facing down and then I'm going to pop a few off the center stem so I want to think about balancing it out so I'm definitely going to want to want at least to want to want I'm going to want at least one here Maybe we'll go for a little bit of a larger one here. And then probably um, one up here, but I'm going to pop a smaller one to make it feel a little bit more balanced because it is close by to these two, these three rather. And then we might even choose to pop a tiny one in here because it is further down the branch. So it's possible that it hasn't grown quite as much. And don't forget, we, we do need to leave room for a few leaves that we're going to pop in just for a little bit of visual interest. So I'm probably going to pop one here, but what I don't want to do is make it the exact same angle and the exact same position as this one. So maybe I'm going to um, take my branch from a little bit lower down, curve it like that and have it curved so that it's actually up towards the light a little bit more like that. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm not going to pop one down here because I'm actually going to pop a leaf coming out of here. Um, we're going to do quite a traditional leaf shape. We're going to take it and then just point it and then what I'm going to do is don't take the leaf all the way back to here you want to leave it so that the stem has come out and you've joined your leaf back up a bit earlier and you can pop a little and this is where you can pop a few of them little dots and dashes towards the edge so one leaf there looks nice I think this curve here would benefit from maybe a couple of leaves that are coming out like so and then I feel like this space here definitely might benefit from at least one leaf there. Um, whether or not you would actually have leaves below the flowers on the stem remains to be seen, but we're going to just pop a couple of small leaves. And the thing is, these could actually be buds of new flowers. So if you want to add a little bit of extra element, what you can do is you can just darken the bottom of the flowers up with just a couple of little tiny strokes. But again, this is where you could choose to wait and go in with your um, extra colored pen if you like, or even we could go back in with a little bit of watercolor and darken those up. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. So the next one we're going to draw is I like to call it the smiley face pancake because that's essentially um, what it is. So again, we're going to not worry about our stems so much. What we're going to do this time is we're going to place our flowers in play. Then we're going to place our stems in with our buds. So the smiley face pancake way to draw these flowers and what happens is the flowers actually will grow a few um, up along one stem so if you want you can do sort of a let's draw a loose line with a pencil and then we're going to pop three of these flowers along this stem so the way to draw this flower is draw yourself a smiley face and then from that smiley face you're going to draw a couple of little lines like so coming out of the center of the smiley face and then what you're going to do is you're going to encapsulate that smiley face in a kind of curved pancake slash cloud i don't know why i think of it as a pancake maybe because my pancakes always come out terrible so it's about having kind of that curve and what we could do is we could darken up the smile a little bit and then draw a smile in a different location pop a couple of those in and then it's about having those curves and those little bits like that okay so let's pop another one maybe this way okay 
So that's nice. So now we've got that, I'm actually going to draw the stem in. So we're going to take a little bit of the bottom of the flower, join it to the stem, take it through, join a little bit of the flower, take the stem, a little bit of the flower, and then we'll take the stem down into the glass. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to do some buds at the end of the flower. So we're going to draw straight up like that and then do a couple more like so out of the top of the flower. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to place another one of those there. So this time I'll probably go for um, a smaller one over here like so and I'm going to join it to that stem. And I'm only going to pop two and I'm going to try and pop one a little bit higher than this and one a little bit higher than this. So we'll go back with our smiley face and pop one here. And then I'll pop one here. Like so. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the buds. I'm going to pop my line in, do a bit darker underneath where the flower is joining and then take this down to meet this stem and then I'm going to make a smaller set of buds at the top of that one, like so. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place a few larger leaves here just to um, fill the composition and then what we'll do is if we feel that we need to place a couple more flowers we can kind of scatter them in so i'm going to use my pencil first just to check i'm happy with where the leaves are coming from so probably a large one kind of like that there um, a taller one this side probably so so kind of like corn dogs or quite large I feel like it needs to have a little bit more of a point there we go one like that and then definitely one higher so if we pop the leaf in where we want it to be first and then we'll bring the stem down to where we want it to join so I'm going to ink those in using the the broader of the two pens with a line and you can make that line a little bit thicker at the bottom so I'll ink in the leaf here Okay, so maybe we could fit a couple more of these smiley face flowers. So do not be afraid to cross over. I'm going to pop one here and I'm going to pop one probably down here, a little bit lower. That's probably maybe coming out of a branch there. So I'm going to do one like this, that's really on its side. And then I'm going to pop one here Again, maybe it's more curved that way. And then I'm going to place maybe just one down here on its own. So I'll pop the flower in first and then we'll deal with the stem later. Because once the flower's in, I can work out that maybe I'd like it to come from there. And actually, a little wood trio would really balance that off quite nicely and it feels like this is quite straight here so what we I'm going to choose to do is pop a little bit of a leaf in fact no let's go for just a bud on its own coming out of the side and I'm just going to do it with my pencil first because I want the bud to be sort of draping down here like this which means it will come out with that stem there
just darken up the bottom of that board. Bring it down to that stem. And then what we might do is just give this a little bit more thickness as it is all one branch. As we're coming down into the pot there. Oh, we've got a missing flower. Um, I think probably coming out of this one's going to um, make more sense than trying to tail back and come out of that centerpiece. Lovely. So the last one, the last one is berries. This is a very, very easy one to do. We're going to do a couple more S curves. So I'm going to take one and curve it that way. This is going to be two stems of berries. And I'm going to take a smaller one, curve it that way. Now you can probably go straight in with berries. They're very, very easy. So we'll just get the stems drawn in. So we'll do our thicker black lines. And then it's berry time. So pop a berry at the top of each one. Now they want to be somewhat round, but they don't want to be perfectly round. I've actually got some berries here. Can you see they're round? These are actually a little bit um, shriveled, but they do have some straighter sides. And then from each of these, we're going to think about, okay, let's pop a berry there, a berry there, and a berry there and a stem with a little berry there, a berry there, and a berry there. Now, all berries will come off a stem, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the longest of stems. Some could be, so we might go for one coming out like that with a berry on the end, with a berry there and there. And then we might even do a little one off it with a little Lone Ranger there. Probably one this way with a berry. And it's just about filling them in. So now I'm going to move over to this one rather than adding to this one just yet, because don't forget we can fill in where we feel we need some more. So again, try not to make this symmetrical. I've got a head of berries there and I've got a little couple of pots there. So if I were to take one off here, I probably want to bring it into this space here. So one thing you can do is you can actually go, okay, I'd like that to be my focal berry. And then I'll take my stem back. And then when I add my berries in, I know that I've got them in the right place for visual interest. So something probably in the middle here. Again, I don't want them all to feel like they're curving the same way. So I'm going to come out a little bit more like this for this one and just pop two on and probably just pop one there and a little one there. Now here, I need to think about, okay, I probably like a large clump about here but I've also got this clump to just finish off here. Maybe pop on there. So I'll pop a couple like that, join it and join them like that. Now you could just leave it like that. It does look quite nice. I'd be tempted to pop another strand here, like so. And the berries don't always have to be in the center of your strand. Can you see the way I did that? And I almost did like a, a D or a B or a P, like a musical note, taking the berry round to the side, like so. And also having thinking about having little Vs of berries. So with this one, I might do two like that and make them both come off the same. So I think I'm happy with that. What we could do is we could just pop a little dark dot on the top of a few of them, just to obviously represent the little black kind of star or spider at the top of the berries. So one last thing that you could do if you wanted to is you could draw in a water line. So I could go, okay, I'm going to draw into my bars like so. 
so there we have it so if you want i sometimes like to just take um a i think this is a bronze jelly roll pen and i like to add a little bit of extra finishing touches so i'm just going to do that on a few of the flowers it's going to certainly make quite a nice impact where i've got the red not on all of them on these definitely in the center i think that will look quite nice just making center of the flowers and maybe just on a couple of the buds like so and then just a couple of dots maybe on some of the berries that i haven't put the the black dot on i'll add a little bit of the gold just and maybe even on some of these white ones quite nice just to have a little bit extra so there you go i hope you've enjoyed this uh, purposeful practice warm-up where we just created some very simple vases and a collection of different botanicals with some berries um, and two different sets of flowers um, and a few different leaves so thank you ever so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up it really helps the channel um, if there's more videos that you'd like to see i am starting my collection please leave me a comment down below um, of what you'd like to see next time um, and subscribe for notifications of my next video thank you ever so much for painting with me and i shall see you soon bye bye